Tournament Prize Pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cyber Arena here for Star Ladder Season 8. It's our final day of action, live from Kiev. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. I'm joined here by Merlini and Ben. Today, we crown ourselves a Season 8 champion. And we see a rematch of one of our Day 1 matchups. Yes, on Day 1, Navi played Sigma, and Navi looked shaken, out of it. The draft was not good, mm -hmm. they got punished, but on Day 2, they quickly seemed to evolve. And they're looking for a wrench, and Sigma is looking to prove themselves as Tier 1 contenders. Yeah, and they're definitely, they're definitely a Tier 1 team, but are they able to beat all the best teams and go all the way? That's Consistently. really the big question. Mm -hmm. And this, if they take it, it would be their first major, major tournament. It's Pro-Am, not major. Minor. It's an online tournament, right? Mm -hmm. it's not, That's true. It's not a Star Ladder, it's not a Dream League, an EMS. Still a, a noteworthy accomplishment, but... This is the big one, and there's a lot more money on the line. For those who haven't heard, it's over 130,000 US dollars in prizes money. I believe 135,000, and only 50 of that coming from Star Ladder. And with that being said, we do have an interview with Fucking Matt on the main stage. Предыдущего матча Navi, Sigma, и это реванш будет по сути. Ну, давайте, ладно, уже перейдем к самим вопросам. So, you need to play against Navi again. Uh, yesterday it was not your best day, so what will happen this day? Well, we try to stay focused for the next game against Navi. Um, facing Navi in the loser bracket, I don't. I think it's harder than facing them in the winner bracket. I mean, Navi like it's like a you know very dangerous animal. You know, when it's wounded, it's even more dangerous. So we need to be very careful. I, I like. When they are one game away to drop from the tournament, they can, they're gonna play really their game for sure. Uh, I hope we can play ours. Yesterday was a hard day for us. Alliance pretty much, you know, make us look like fools. <laughs> so we, we learn from that and we just stay focused and we're gonna be ready for this match. Uh, yeah, and um, your player, Fata, afraid, uh, scared, all of gamers uh, that he will play with Invoker and nobody. Give you an walker. Is it your plan, or <laughs> you know, what's the problem? Well, they're very scared of our invoker. That's for sure. Uh, they saw it in scrims. It's actually the hero we had prepared. Um, we're very, very confident with it. But well, if they buy invoker, we get Bane. We, ben Al we get Alchemist. We get I don't know some very strong heroes. Wisp that it we didn't we didn't use yet other heroes that we didn't use. It's okay, I mean, when you have to force a ban, it's always good. I mean, when Bulldog, when you have to ban Prophet against Bulldog, it doesn't put you in a good position. If they have to ban Prophet and, and Invoker and Bane against us, it's not gonna put them in a good position for sure. Yeah, so we have much more uh, variety so of the game while the, when they need to force ban uh, Invoker or some kind of hero. Yeah, I agree with this. Uh, so, will you repeat what you did with Navi uh, two days ago, or I don't know how to explain it. So, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope we can repeat what we did against Navi two days ago. Um, it's going to be a challenge for us because I think they're on the um, how to say they have better momentum and we have worse momentum because we lost yesterday, they won yesterday. So it's very important to do that the mindset. But once again, it's and it's what we said within the team. It's up to us to bounce back now, and I mean, being a top team is not only about winning games, it's about losing games and being able to win the game you, you have to play after you lost. So it's a good test for us, once again, all we want is this kind of test, that's why we attend LANs, that's why we, we're eager to play against like, as much games as we can, uh, because the aim is of course TI, and every tournament that's coming. So it's a good test, once again it's a good test for us, let's hope we can pass it. Uh, even if you will lose to d to, um, today, uh, will you satisfied uh, with uh, your results at Star Ladder? Um, it's a hard question. No, we won't be satisfied. Top three is not what I what we expect. We come here for top one and nothing else. That's for sure. Like every tournament we attend, so no, we won't be satisfied. But we we will be satisfied with the team. I think like the atmosphere we had. Um, the motivation we had, the, um, the focus we had, so far, very, it was very good. So that's a good thing, a good sign for the team. And so we are satisfied with that. Ну что ж, если вкратце сказать, о чем мы только что разговаривали, о том, что с нами будет. 
Well, Ben, uh, as we often see from Fucky Mad, he is a very confident captain and leader for this team. Mm. He seems like he's not that rattled by yesterday's Law Source Alliance. Yeah, I really like the mentality of Sigma. We actually had a chance to talk to them a bit yesterday. Uh, they stayed here very late watching replays, just playing some pubs to kind of, you know, work on their hone their focus, their mechanics, what have you. And uh, they, they're a very disciplined and kind of dedicated team at these events. You know, you, teams like Navi, Fnatic, they kind of let loose and have fun a little more. I mean, Navi was here until like 5 in the morning after the first night. And uh, it's interesting just to see teams having different approaches. So Sigma taking the opportunity very seriously uh, and doing a lot of research for Navi. And, in the first day, we saw preparation really did make the difference for this team. They had a lot of success. He said, we know how they're going to play. We're confident against them. Can they do it again is the big question now. Yeah, that really is. I don't think they'll be able to protect what Navi is going to do. Um, I haven't actually checked the odds. I didn't know if they changed too much from the other day. I think they were, what, like 73-27 the first day? Today is 71-29, so just slightly less in favor of Navi. And here we see some stats from Bucking Mad. And the Bane's obviously the key hero here. Uh, as far as the supports go, it seems to be the one that they're most comfortable with. Uh, we saw the Alk and they did fine with it, but they really like just ha having Fiend's Grip especially. I mean, we, we talk about the Sleep Arrow a lot, but every time Fiend's Grip up, Sigma's a team that likes to just find these small engagements around the map, find a pick-off mm -hmm. here, a pick-off there, and Bane's probably one of the best support heroes to do that. Yeah, the thing is they have to get kills to get ahead. Um, that's the thing about Sigma that really... Um jumped out at me yesterday just because when alliance was farming and sigma was farming alliance was getting like way ahead and they really need kills they really uh excel at small skirmishes not at team fight and not at afk farming well i guess the big question is do they get a draft that allows them to employ that style mm. navi has shown us uh, i think that they've just they sort of understand the way the teams are playing at this tournament a bit better as the tournament's gone on like not seeing the pugna ban when the dk veno came out on day one then we saw it on day two uh and i think it's where it's gonna be hard a lot harder for sigma to outdraft navi today than it was on on day one and here's miggle miggle i think has been a very important player um for sigma in the win uh his life stealer especially with the early obra venom combined with a venomancer just wreaked havoc on the on day one of star ladder finals and his next assassin was pretty good yesterday versus alliance too although they ended up losing he still contributed a lot to um them getting a big edge in the early mid game so if you're up against this sigma team it seems like what most teams want to do is ban invoker and ban bane mm -hmm. uh it seems like th you don't have to worry about wisp too much with them uh Alchemist, it seems teams are willing to give it to them and they'd rather get rid of the Bane. So if you're Sigma, what do you take at that point? Well, I think they need to be more flexible. They don't seem to utilize a Wisp pick as well as some of the other teams, Fnatic mostly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if they increase their repertoire of supports, it would go a long way into being more unpredictable and being able to actually win drafts. Just because Bane is a really good setup. Um, I also think they could possibly take Abaddon in the first uh, two. Or, or tree, maybe, something or that tree. they've also run occasionally. Because mm -hmm. the defensive sleeps that are really important, um, they use that really well on Bane, and no other hero can really do that, I think, except like Shadow Demon, who's kind of fallen out of popularity, and Abaddon, who usually gets banned out in the second phase against Sigma. Yeah, and I mean, they have played Wisp games with okay results, but, you know, it's just not something they're that confident with, mm -hmm. I guess is the main 100 thing. 100% win rate, but I don't know what the sample size is. Yeah, and I mean, they used to be running a lot of OD solo mid. He's really fallen out of favor, but I mean, maybe something... He also gets banned out a lot. Yeah. So I think if they want OD, they should pick it first. And, you know, maybe we see Navi go for, like, the Dragonite for Dendi, and that's where you can fit an OD in and, mm -hmm. and get a lot of farm in your lane. I think that in Navi is going to first pick Invoker, though, if they're, if it's, if they're I don't first think, pick. Do you think Sigma's going to give it away? I don't think they'll ban it. I think they want it for themselves. We'll see Navi will see definitely ban it. I'm pretty confident. And not if they're first pick. No, 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 if they're second pick. Oh, if they're second pick, yeah. And, well, obviously Navi has a lot of options in terms of, like, the strategies they employ. We've seen them use a lot of Lifestealer for Havost in the past. They've kind of turned away from that recently. We saw the Kunkka yesterday, which was actually... I think a great hero for Havost, and I would not mind seeing that again. I feel like it suits their play style. He likes to roam a lot early, and Invoker, or sorry, not Invoker, uh, Admiral Kunkka, a good hero to do that with. You can set up kills, the bow has a low cooldown, so you can fight often. Uh, and it's a pretty tanky, durable hero that can be in the front lines. And these two supporters, we just saw Puppy's stats on the screen, and now we see Kuroki. Puppy hasn't played Chen in 
quite some time it looks like and Kuroki hasn't played his namesake Rubik so it looks like they're expanding to other supports Kuroki had a very beastly visage though that was a magnificent performance from him and if they go visage I don't think we'll be seeing the puppy visage again this tournament mm -hmm. it's just such a comfortable hero for Kuroki right Funic, I, I, to me he's been the standout so far for Navi in this tournament the most consistent he's played even in the games that they lost the Sigma his Nyx he's always hitting 2-3 hero impales uh, often carapacing some crucial spells as well uh, and he's played such a variety of heroes. We've seen his Timber Saw he was very effective on. Uh, the Clockwork, always something he can turn to, uh, although we have not seen it as frequently. Havos apparently only has four most played heroes. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I think they're trolling a bit. Well, the Master Troll getting trolled. How appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, of course, he can play a lot more than this. We saw the Kunker yesterday. We have not seen much Riki out of him or Doom. Uh, there's, this is a guy that can play pretty much anything. Weaver is definitely a hero that uh, is out there for him. Not something they've been using much lately, though. He is known for his overextensions. I think he has to be really careful about that uh, so they don't get too far behind in the Sigma game. I think that's a, actually a really important point in general for this matchup is that's where Sigma saw success against Na'Vi. Right. Is you look at the one game where Miga, or sorry, uh, Fada was on Slark. When they overextend the top, they gave him a double kill. Mm -hmm. Those are the types of things that will break the game open for Sigma. And Navi, known for being aggressive in general, not just to Vos, but the whole team, have to make sure not to overextend there. Yeah. Are we going to see passive play styles from either of these teams? Sigma's honestly been pretty greedy and passive in a few of the recent games. Like going for the Lich and the Venno, trying to just like outfarm the opponents on the laning stage. We saw them run to DK and Luna. Uh, and. Like, fairly greedy. Oh, no, the, the one game we also saw, the sorry, the Gyrocopter, DK. Uh, Lifestealer. Lifestealer, yeah, the Tricor. Very greedy draft, so I don't know if they can get away with that against Navi. Mm -hmm. I agree with you there. So we'll see if they kind of adjust things here. Maybe the Marana for Sakshka is something I thought they should have gone for yesterday. Uh, they chose to go Gyro instead, but getting these heroes that can fight early and often, I, that's, to me, where they're strongest. Yep. Even if they can't get the Bane as well. Yeah, I think they need heroes that can fend for themselves and have some sort of innate escape ability too. Like Gyrocopter is just uh, not the hero for them. Something like a Potom and something like a Lifestealer or Weaver even uh, would be pretty good. But I don't really see them run too much Weaver, surprisingly. Yeah, these and these two carry players, I mean, for me, how they should be playing is fairly similar. They won't... I, Havos may be joining fights a bit more than Sakshka, who tends right. to... Right, Sakshka's more farmy. Yeah, but he's still not, you know, he's not like AFK farm or anything. No. He will come to fights, and if he's like here like Morana, he can use Moonlight Chat to help the team a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see, but uh, we also... Viper's a hero that we've been seeing pop up here and there occasionally, especially in combination with these pushing lineups. Uh, Pugna as well, something that both teams have run. And by the way, I don't know if you got to see G League uh, earlier today at the finals, but there was some Death Prophet... It's a good hero. Yeah. It's a really good hero. The Death Prophet was doing a lot of work, uh, even though it didn't end up winning the game. But I don't think she was the problem by any means. So I think She's I, way underrated. Yeah. Was she carry or mid? I actually didn't see the laning stage. Mm -hmm. I just tuned in the middle of the game. But uh, trying to go back to sleep because <laughs> I only got three hours last night. But uh, yeah, the Death Prophet, w they had, DK had like a Bristleback and uh, a wi Bristleback Wisp and... Was it a Timber Saw? It was some other really tanky hero. And, like, yeah, they could just not kill the Bristleback or Timber Saw, except with the Death Prophet ult. That was the only way they could bring them down. So we'll see. But uh, comparing these two support players, we have not seen Puppy jungling at all this tournament. Are we going to see some Chen, some Enchantress, some Enigma? Uh, I think he played Crystal Maiden, I guess, as, as close as we see yeah. him jungling, but that doesn't Not really count. Not the signature count. ones. Like, especially right. Enchantress, I feel, is really strong right now. Yeah, I think they really need Puppy to take control of the early game, though. When he plays a very passive and farmy early game, like we see some of the other supports, um, like Fly, I think it just leads to not a good early game. And I think Na'Vi... They're good at playing from behind, but they just play so much better when they're ahead. Like, they, they snowball way easier than other teams. And as opposed to a team like Fnatic, who had a lead on Alliance, and then they just kind of gave it away. I think Na'Vi, if they have an early game lead, generally do not give it away. Right. Uh, the two offlaners, I feel like Miguel's been a bit quiet so far this tournament. We haven't seen, like, an explosive performance out of him. Funic to me is definitely, you compare the two offlaners, Funic's the one who's really been performing well. Sigma, I think, is not that explosive of a team in general, though. They're, they're Except for Fata is probably the most yeah, explosive. Yeah. They're, the they're very um, calm and calculated, I think, and rely on, rely on mistakes from the opponents um, more so than 
you know, just being all up in their face all the time. Which is where maybe Navi is the better matchup for them as compared to Alliance. Fucking right. Mad did say it's harder to draft against Navi for him, but I think Navi being the kind of team that makes mistakes because they're so aggressive, that works in their favor. I definitely agree with you there. I have seen Navi play very passive in Farmy though too, so uh, Sigma I think I think that would be better for Navi if they did, just because I think it worked out really well in the Alliance and Sigma game, just because Sigma didn't really have the um, didn't have the ability to mitigate their farm at all. Any uh, any unusual pocket hero picks or strategies that you think are still out there that we might see? Mm, I think the most unusual ones are like Slark, Death Prophet, and Invoker. I guess Invoker isn't even uncommon anymore. I mean, Funky Mad basically said like Invoker was our top secret strat. <laughs> well, not top secret, but it was. The, they were really hoping to get to use them at this event, and I, until they beat. Navi with something else? I don't think they're going to. Maybe if they dominate game one with something like Slark? Pugna? Yeah. Oh, Pugna, definitely a hero. Yeah, but I mean, none of those are, like, unknown strats, though. Yeah. They're somewhat unusual, I guess, the Pugna, Slark, and Death Prophet. Um, but I, we, we could definitely see uh, either the Pugna or the Death Prophet. I think Sigma may rely on a push strat in one of these games. So looking at the two teams in terms of, like, the players, uh, who are... I think we're sort of feeling the same way that it's probably the supports in the laning stage that are going to really... Both of these teams very snowball-oriented. Sigma said it in interviews. We've seen it from Fato and Slark earlier in this tournament. Uh, and obviously Na'Vi, known for being more of a snowball-y team. Uh, the supports are the ones who generally get that ball rolling. And it looks like we're about to introduce the game. Uh, has not loaded in just yet, but we should be starting fairly soon. Yeah, I think in terms of each of the matchups, like Dendi versus Fada. Dendi, I think, plays a slightly more farmy. Um, but th sometimes that's just what his hero dictates. That's a very even matchup. They've both been playing really solid right. on the mid lane. And then Miggle versus Funic. I mean, Miggle has had dual lane support for many of the games, but Funic, I think, is a much bigger playmaker than Miggle. Um, Miggle, often, he TP reacts instead of TP initiates, ganks, TP and, initiates. And, and starts the fight. So right. yeah, definitely agree there. Uh, Timbersaw could be Potentially that playmaking offlane hero. For or clockwork. Yeah, or clockwork. And in terms of the carry players in a tri lane, I think that Havost, yeah, generally more aggressive than Saksha. So then, I mean, for me, it's still about the supports. And right. The supports are. Kuro be very Kuroki's important. probably been the flashiest support out of the four here, mainly because of that Visage game, but uh, Puppy being the key for, for Navi. I mean, mm -hmm. for Quantic. Or, sorry, Quantic. <laughs> Oh man, it's uh, for Sigma. Bucky for Matt Sigma. had he had a, he was really farming on the Venomancer. He had that Necro three up pretty fast in the Alliance game. So um, he, I mean, a lot of these supports have been tending to farm way more than is beneficial for them in the early game, though. It's a really hard balancing act, right? And right. Especially when you have the opportunity to do it, when you're like Venomancer with Plague Wards and Crystal Maiden with Frostbite, you're like, hey, yeah, you know, I can get level 6 pretty easily, I can... Alliance seems to be the team who's found the best balance between uh, farming as well as right. rotating. Well, it's game. also because they rotate with their carries and their offlane are much quicker than other teams. Like, Loda TPs way earlier than any other carry I've seen in this tournament. And do you think other teams should be TPing more? I think so. It, yeah. If the situation calls for it, if you can play Greedy and, and they're just farming jungle, then yeah, why not? But if someone's diving, you're mid uh like they dove they they dove quite a lot and right. he uh they were like trying to take advantage of admiral bulldog in the bottom lane and they just got a two for one because of that and uh they also lane swap too because admiral bulldog was just not having a good time so i don't think that teams are adaptive enough and i think that loda and alliance's success has been due to their adaptive play in game okay well on that note guys we are hopping away into the draft it's time for game one of a best of three winner moves on into the grand predictions finals. before we go in and before we go in, I am going to say Navi 2-0. Navi 2-0? Mm. As long as they, if they draft equally well, I don't think Sigma think, has much of a shot. I think Navi 2-1. I think that Sigma will take them by surprise. I'd, love to, be, I'd love to be proven wrong, though. Mm -hmm. it'd, be, it'd be nice to see something besides Navi Alliance, as good as that series is. But we'll see. Uh, Alliance is waiting for the winner of this, of course, and they'll have the one-game winner bracket advantage. But before we get into that, Merlini, the draft's begun. We were debating, will Sigma ban Invoker? And we, we were saying that definitely Navi would if they didn't have first pick. But they do have first pick, and they first pick the Invoker. Yeah, that's not completely unexpected. The Bane pick is definitely a good one unless they want to first pick it. But they're, Navi's not going to first pick Bane. So if they're not going to first pick Bane and they're first pick, they might as well ban it. Um, yeah, Invoker slips through. And they're, Navi's not going to give Sigma 
an invoker, I don't think, in any of these games for whatever reason. I, I mean, apparently it's just that badass that they cannot give it away to Sigma at any cost. Apparently Dendi's invoker is not badass. <laughs> the more yeah, you it's, know. Not, it's not badass enough to be first man every time. Apparently. apparently. But well. Kuroki... Kuroki's Visage and Puppies Enchantress. I, I actually I do like those bands a lot from Sigma. Those are really good bands. If you're gonna let Invoker through, I think those are especially the Enchantress. Something you just you don't want to give Puppy. I think Invoker can be shut down. Uh, for some reason, we haven't seen Doom at all in this tournament. It was very popular in D two O. It is very popular. And he's really I think good in December. Invoker. And, and the Asian teams like it on a lot. The Asian teams have not been picking him as much lately, though. Oh really? Um, but there was like. Uh, in WPCA, there was a lot of Disruptor Doom. They really seem to favor that combo in particular. And it's kind of interesting, right? You Doom one hero. Enemy team's reaction is, we don't want to fight right now while here our, this guy's Doom. But Disruptor kind of forces you to glimpse you back into the fight, mm -hmm. uh, zoning you out of it, uh, or zoning the other heroes out of it, potentially with Kinetic Field. So a support that just has suddenly kind of fallen off. I think silences are really underrated in this version, um, especially if you like to fight early, because if you can fight before they get BKBs, and silence is extremely effective, and Disruptor's really good at that. We um, did see the one silencer pick from, uh, I believe it was Alliance, right, right on day one, right. and that worked really well. Silence is, I mean, especially fact, if it's a hero it was, like Timber. It was an amazing performance from EGM on the silencer. Right. We'll see, it, we'll see if it comes out again, but not for Sigma. It looks like they already have their two supports, the Alchemist for Poss and the Venomancer. Venomancer for Fucky Mad. This team really prefers picking their supports first uh, and getting both of them often in the first stage, but not many other teams are doing that. Most teams are getting at least one farmer, uh, one core in the first stage. So it's a bit of a different approach to the draft. Yeah. Uh, looks like Navi. I fully expect them to ban Pugna every single second phase of this tournament, though. And Sigma, if, if they pick it first, I mean, like, what would you pick to, like, counter a Pugna even if the other team picked it? Well, I guess it depend generally we've seen him in the safe lane right mm -hmm. and i mean he's a solo mid fairly often too yeah i feel like it's not as effective though because it's hard to generate enough momentum to take a tower by yourself whereas mm -hmm. in the, your safe lane you can creep pull then you've got a double wave and then you can push with that um and you can also have three heroes there potentially right up Basilius, maybe some enchantress creep so also the hardest lane to rotate to defend uh it seems like especially the chinese teams they tend to run the pugna as a farmer in the safe lane but either way, we're not going to see him. And Murana gets banned as well. I like this ban. I think it's something that uh, Sakshka should have played yesterday, but they didn't draft it for him. And he's not going to get it here. It would have been much better, I think, than the gyro, uh, than the gyro pick. But yeah, Navi just banning a lot of what Sigma likes. The Pugna, which they lost to. The Bane and Potum, which they are uh, very well known for. Sigma, no unusual bans either. Uh, Navi without any support picks. There is the Wisp ban, probably a Chen ban, I assume. If they're scared of an Enchantress, they should probably be scared of a Chen, too. Yeah, and the, especially with the Invoker in combination. Necro 3, you get some Chen creeps, mm -hmm. your mech, and you can split push. You can team fight quite well. It's just an annoying combo to deal with. I think it's going to be a CM pick, too. It, the, what other supports are left in the pool? There's like Rubik, Crystal Maiden. We have seen very little Chen. Rubik. And I, I think he's still very viable, but teams seem to prefer supports that can don't rely as much on pulls, can do more in the jungle on their own. I mean, aside from Visage, who can once he's six, all of the supports we're seeing now are very far independent in terms of acquiring their own farm. So Sigma going with the Luna pick, but without a Pugna, they won't be able to push. Oh, it just oh, came up on yeah, the screen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, but without any uh, Pugna on their team, then it should be very, very difficult for them to take down early towers. We saw. Um, a Luna run yesterday, but it just did, didn't seem to do that much. It seems like a lot of the carries that require BKB to fight, Gyro, Luna, I think being the two big ones, are really struggling right now. Mm -hmm. Is that is that just me? I mean, we've seen like players on Marana get BKB, but you don't really need it to be involved in the fights. But Luna, Gyro especially, I think can't it's, really team fight without it. I think it's more because people, the, the players think that, oh, man, we have the late game if I farm up. But that's not necessarily true because then the other team just forces four on fives and then you lose when you can actually fight very very effectively with these heroes. Similar to what we saw yesterday with uh, Havos. He, he has a late game if they choose to go late game. But if they bring the fight early, you need to fight with your team. And he fought a lot as the Kunga. But for some reason, the Lunas and the Gyrocopters don't fight when their ultimate is up. Well, I guess Gyros is like a minute cooldown, so he doesn't really have an excuse. Yeah, Luna's, of course, yeah. having... If you have an Eclipse and they're tower diving, there's no creeps usually, and then you can just completely d uh, turn around and fight with that. So I think that... In general, but against Chen, Chen is a pretty good way to deal with Luna. Right. Uh, tanking pretty much all the Eclipse damage, and 
It also might discourage a Lich pick. Chen, pretty much like the counter to Lich as far as su other supports go. Uh, and actually, Sigma are going for something different here. Batrider, I think, is a really good pick, too. Um, invo if they grab Invoker, he's going to have a really difficult time. I think they're going to have to grab Invoker, um, too. If he goes for a Yules or even just cast Tornado, then... Oh, you th mean you mean focusing him with the Lasso first? Yeah, because yeah. you need, like, what, a Doom, I think, or... A, a Doom, I think, is probably the best to shut down Invoker in team fights. but it looks like uh, Batrider will be their choice, which is not bad. It's something that we saw a lot at 6.78, but there are really that many outstanding bat rider players i think s4 is by and far the best one in the western scene other than that the other ones are just decent and with the nerf it's a little bit underpowered underwhelming rather compared to many of the other gankers that they can pick well speaking of players who are outstanding at certain heroes kuroki is certainly an outstanding rubik he gets it again here uh, or not again but he used to be playing it a lot it's fallen off a bit but good matches up well against bat rider whenever he jumps you just instantly lift him if he mm. ever gets off a lasso and it's not on you can steal it and use it against him and turn into a Batrider once you've Blinker Force. Also good against the Luna to steal Eclipse. One of the harder spells to protect, I would say, if you have the right vision. Even stable, yeah, Concoction and War Plague Wars, though, is ridiculously strong. There's a lot of good stuff to steal here for the Ruby. He's also very squishy, though. He does have the Null Field, but if he gets hit by Alkson, he's going to die. If he gets lassoed, he's most likely going to die unless Dendi's there to save him. So Dendi and Kuro have to work together very well in this game to make sure that people don't die to Batrider initiate. And with these two supports, Navi have some flexibility. They can dual roam a lot early if they want to. Uh, Timbersaw, Invoker, fairly independent. Solos don't need much backup. We'll see what Havos gets here, but uh, they have that potential. They can also just focus on farming, stacking, pulling, uh, and jungling for the Chen. So Navi with a very flexible laning stage here. And same for Sigma, to be honest. And the Luna ban comes out, or sorry, the TA ban rather, comes out from Navi. It would have been, I think, fairly greedy for them to go with a TA um, if they had wanted to do that with the Batrider offlane, the try with the Luna. But it would have been really good for Roshan. They have a lot of the minus armor, and Sigma is on Dire this game. So I think the TA ban is pretty smart, so, especially considering the matchup. So who's the third farmer here for Sigma? The Alchemist looks to be a, I normally a support. Alchemist. He's normally a support. Abaddon's almost always a oh, support. Is it, is, it might be an Alk solo mid. And that would put... Batrider, I guess, off lane and then Luna safe lane. Right. I think, mm, does Fada play Batrider? I'm sure he does, but I, I have not seen him play it recently. Yeah, but they don't really have a good off laner. Unless they want to do dual lanes, which is not terrible, but it, it's, it's definitely They unusual. could do, like, I don't know, Venno, Abaddon or something, and, and run Luna, Luna Alk and put Bat mid, potentially. Yeah. Because like Sigma really likes dual lanes way more than most teams. Yeah, I think the Veno Abaddon lane, they, they can just leave it alone because who cares if those two get items and they would just yeah. crush the other lane. So it would be... Be kind of unusual. It, it, yeah, it would be unusual. Same for Na'Vi. Who Let's are see. They're not working on their last pick and it will be Hovos hero. Is it going to be the Kunkka? Mm. Pretty good against Bat. <laughs> Actually... Well, how did, how did we miss this one? It slips by and it slips by Sigma as well. They chose to ban Gyro... I would have rather seen a Lifestealer ban. I honestly didn't even realize he was still in the draft. Yeah, I thought that they would have banned Lifestealer over Gyrocopter. Yeah, that, I was like, well, he's probably banned if they're going for the Gyro, but Havos gets one of his signature heroes. Yeah, it's not that great versus Venno and Bat and Alchemist. Alchemist with the minus armor, right. Venno with the slow through the rage, and Bat Rider with a grip through the rage. So it's There are other heroes, like you said, the Invoker is probably a priority, though, and that right. means maybe Havos gets to do his thing. What if he like hides dealer. inside Invoker and next levels them and pops out and <laughs> slows the Bat Rider? The Forge Spirits, perhaps? Mm -hmm. I, I still think that Lifestealer is pretty good versus Bat Rider, though. Like, he doesn't really get affected by Firefly that much. A turn rate is annoying, but if you... He, he can get a clean initiate, though. Well, it's a best of three, Ben. This is only game one. Loser still has a shot, but you drop down. Like, <laughs> I love the way that Funky Man put in the pregame interview. It's Navi is like a wounded animal in the lower bracket, and it's true. They've made a lot of runs in the past and from this position. And on that note, it's time to introduce our teams as soon as I fix my camera acceleration speed. There we go. Game one now underway. It's Sigma versus Navi. We start with the dire side. We start with Sigma. We'll have Sakshka take up the reins of the Luna. Miguel going to be handling your Venomancer. Fucking mad. The captain, the drafter for this team, playing the Abaddon. Fata, the snowballing solo mid on the Batrider. And that leaves Poss, a pioneer of support alchemist, uh, reprising his sounds? role on that again. I, 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 I don't have game sound in my headphones, but uh, not sure if it's on the stream. Oh, we might see an early clash. 
Well, Ben, uh, we introduced Sigma, or I introduced Sigma. Okay. I'll leave, I'll leave the honors of introducing Navi to you. For Navi, we have Funic on the offlane Timber Saw. We have Dendi on the solo mid Invoker, which I'm sure the crowd is happy about. Havos on the Lifestealer Puppy on a signature Chen. And last but not least, we see Rubik on his, or Kiroki on the signature Rubik. I was about to say it the other way around. And they have two smokes off the bat, and you can hear the crowd getting into it. It's fairly early for Starlighter. What, a, a land tournament that tends to start pretty late, but these fans are already warmed up. There was a big line, even a few hours before the games began, so look for this crowd to really get hyped if Navi gets on any kind of action going their way. Mm -hmm. And the double damage rune will spawn bottom, and it goes to Miguel. This could be our first blood. Puppy's caught out of position. Havost is here, but they can just run him down. They have a shield available. Puppy gonna die. Can they get off a deny? They can. Well played by Havost. Very well played. Doesn't it doesn't really cost Puppy that much because the creeps have not actually spawned yet. Yeah, if he didn't get that deny, that would mean a boots for Venomancer, and then he can start harassing the Chen. So that is a really big deal that he was able to get that deny off. Yeah, and well, maybe if the Gale's doing damage, it's a little bit harder to pull that off as well. But you sh I, I don't think you should be able to deny Gale. Level one Gale. Yeah. If it doesn't do damage, why can you deny it? Yeah. It, it's, I, very, it's very bizarre, to be honest. It's, it's super bizarre. Ice Frog, please. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it doesn't make that big of a difference, but I think in this particular case, it could potentially make a pretty big difference in the game. Well, obviously, in this case, it would have made a huge difference. Yeah. Boots or no boots? We saw our Russian casters. <laughs> Hello to Casper and Valat, but we do unpause now. We hop back into it. And Sigma, despite being denied a first blood, are still... It's still not a bad start. Puppy will be a tiny bit slowed down by this, but not too much. He finds a centaur. He clears out the camp, and he'll do it before one minute. So, yeah, honestly, no, not really slowed down there. at all. Yeah. So, Sigma does go with the offlane dual lane that I mentioned as a possibility. You mentioned you don't really think this is a good lane because who cares if they get far? Right, it's just like, eh, whatever. It, and Kuro and Puppy will get farmed too if both of them are in the lane. And if, and if either of them leave, then Havos is going to get a lot of farm. So it's not really that effective. They're trying to zone him out right now. They could lift him into a stun here potentially for Kuro. Oh, not able to get in range. Yeah, it would have been pretty close. I'm surprised he didn't do it. He has plenty of men in the spare. So our middle lane is going to be Dendi's Invoker against Fata's Batrider. Who has the edge here and... Uh, should either team be looking to send their supports towards mid sometime soon? Uh, I don't... I mean, I think that Batrider has an edge. I think he has an edge in many one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups. Mm, but I don't think he should be able to kill him. It's pretty hard to tower dive into Cold Snap is the the one issue there. Yeah, Cold Snap. And you'll have a Force Spirit beating on him too. So if he just goes Cold, cold Snap, Force Spirit, and always tries to have a Force Spirit up, he should be okay. So comparing the two offlanes so far, Sigma devoting two heroes bottom. They didn't get the first blood. And uh, on the side of... Navi, the, Funic is not being zoned out at all, and that seems to be the story for this team. Is Funic just consistently gets his levels in the off lane, even though he's purely on his own every game. Yeah, generally you need a lar longer range hero in order to do so, and yeah, they're gonna harass Funic a little bit, but it, it's gonna be extremely difficult to kill him. They have a fair amount around, of around level three. I think they could actually kill him. Don't yeah. level two loose and beam, level two stun. They've already got a point acid spray here. Funic's so. probably gonna get uh, more timber chain though, just so he can escape. Yeah, he just throws one out now. He's only level... He just hits level 3, and he will level up the Timber Chain. Farm even so far. Sigma doing well for all three cores. and But I think for Navi, the big thing is their supports are getting a lot out of the woods. And you compare that to the Abaddon, not getting too much himself. Just leeching experience here and there. And now we'll see Navi potentially go for their first smoke gank. Well, not when Sigma are spotting them. But there's a lot of back and forth here. A lot of posturing from both teams. That could have been our first blood if they got the lift off of Miguel, but not able to do so. Miguel has boost and Kuroka, he doesn't. Yeah, he's no, he has it, though. He is the farmer in this lane. Not something we've seen much of, the farming Benno. Fnatic has run it occasionally in the past. We saw Ice 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 play it. Shell 8 has played it. Yeah, but in the Western scene especially, it's quite unusual. Mm -hmm. Once in a while. Pa's getting a decent amount of um, stack XP, too. Uh, but yeah, Funic is level 3.5 right now, which is... It, I mean, that's that's really good for Navi. Yeah, Puppy not stacking the woods just yet, but he is farming. Actually, I'd say more than what you normally see Puppy do. Generally, he at least goes for his first smoke gank around this time, but I imagine we'll see it pretty soon. It's pretty difficult to kill a Batrider, even with Cold Snap. He can just fly above the cliff, and none of his lanes are doing very poorly. But here we go. He's already Maybe making another move in, but there is an Observer Ward here, and Sigma should be absolutely fine. 
Well, they'll let Puppy wrap around. They're gonna TP in the Alchemist already, but is it too late? Fucky Mac gets caught out. He's gonna end up going down. First blood to Navi. The trade will be there though. They get Puppy and they actually make it a two for one in the, nope, sorry, one for one. But it could well be a two for one as Kuroki's on the run. Wards get deployed. Diving for this one is Miguel. Kuroki still alive for the time being. Now they turn on Miguel. Havost wants a kill here. He's got open wounds. He'll pop it. The Centaur going. This is going to be a two for one going Navi's way. The zap comes from Kuro. He lives. And Navi now on the board. And Sigma really feeling the pain from not getting that first blood earlier. They now give it up to Navi. Bucking Mad was just out of position there. He was. I, I, maybe he thought that Paz was there they, earlier on the Alchemist. They had this observer one. Yeah, they, they saw him like right here. Yeah. And he went all the way around. I can't even draw on the he map. Like paused, here. He paused yeah. for a second, too. Puppy didn't run, like, straight in. He, like, stopped. He was organizing his creep, and then he went. It seemed like Sigma was saying, okay, we're going to TP in one. We're going to turn this around on them, but it yeah. was way too late. He could have also pre-shielded himself, too, but um, but he just really didn't do that much there. Abaddon also was unable to save Miggle. He was very, very close to being able to shield and then re-heal him with the Mist Coil, but unfortunately... Range just a little bit too short. And the worst part for Sigma is not only do they come out on the, the losing side of that engagement, but now they've TP'd a third hero bottom, which means Funnick is going to have a ball in this top lane, and he already was. He's sitting at level 5. Could potentially go for a solo kill on this Luna if he hits 6 soon. And okay. certainly will get a lot of farm out of the lane. Yep. I'm surprised Miggle didn't go the Orb of Venom. He, he likes to do that, and I've seen some people do it on the Venomancer for the triple damage over time. We it's see. a very cheap item. Yeah, we see two supports rotating mid. Uh, one thing I don't like about Abaddon, my biggest gripe about him is the low range on a Photic Shield. Like that range is just so tiny, especially as like a melee support hero, that it's very, very difficult to get it off when you need it. Yeah, and I mean, you compare it to like Shallow Grave when it's max, which has a much longer range. Mm -hmm. Or even like something like Disrupt. Yeah. Or Defensive Nightmare. And here comes a rotation towards top. Poss is coming in. He might look to make a go here on Funic. There might be some TPs available for Navi. Nope, none so far. He they has four the reactive stun. armor. Stack. They do drop the acid spray as well, reducing his armor. Lucent Beam will be available. They want to interrupt the timber chain here, and they will get a kill. Big rotation from Poss setting that one up. Very nicely done, but it's going to be Navi's turn to reply as they smoke up and head towards mid. That was a very important kill, too. Sigma needs more momentum, and getting that uh, kill on Funic right before he is level 6 too. Uh, very important. The gold graph almost at zero. XP graph almost at zero too. So it looks like everything is right about even in this game. We see Puppy and Kiro smoked up as Chen. Yeah, they were making a go towards mid and now maybe they just rotate all the way around. Nope, they're sitting on mid. They'll look for a cold snap to initiate this one, then come in for a lift, I imagine. But Fata is playing smart and played safe. Haster and Bottle, not an easy target to, to bring down. Sigma and Navi both have really good Roshan lineups. Sigma with the uh, uh, Plague Ward, the l mass damage from um, Luna, and the Batrider control that they have. They could attempt an early Roshan too, but Navi with the Chen creeps could also do it uh, for themselves. So it's important that neither uh, these teams give up an early lead so they don't give them an early Roshan. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the Batrider because we haven't seen him much recently, but the probably, uh, without any dispute, the hardest hero to stop a Roche against because of the control he gives you over the pit area as well as the vision advantage. There's a, there's a smoke from Batrider. He's looking for another kill on Funic. He does have the haste. Here he goes. Pops it is going to jump in, but there's your there's your unstable concoction set up. Now Funic eats a loose and be and a lasso. He's going to go down. That stun lasts so long. Yeah, they, and it's got such good range, too. Yep. You could Timber Chain away, and then the stun will just follow you the whole way through. I wonder if Navi's regretting not banning out uh, Alchemist. Alchemist yet. We'll see. So far, it's still quite even overall. I mean, it's a 500 gold lead. Nothing too much to worry about for Navi, and their mid-game is very fearsome. The Chen getting decent levels. Kroki's Rubik doing pretty well. Not as well as this Alchemist, though, who's already hit level 6. Poss is having a really fast start, and... Been quite high impact on the Alk so far. Havos already going with a super greedy build. He has a Midas. Uh, he could potentially get punished for this if Batrider keeps going on him and he just can't survive before he can infest or he dies during the rage because he doesn't have any HP. So uh, it is it is greedy. Espe it feels especially greedy because no other team is going Midas really right now, aside from like Nature's Prophet players and, and maybe an Invoker once in a while. But we've really seen the, the trend of mass Midases and Midases on carry players die down. Teams tend to favor getting the early phase boots, uh, early drums, items that help you fight now, but... Yeah, it's, it's because coming back is so hard. 
in this version. Yeah, and well, I guess Midas is okay for helping you come back, but not losing the laning stage is a better way to do it. Right, definitely. So Ben, game even so far early on. Do you have a favorite if it stays even? Mm, I think it will just a, a lot will have to do with pause. If, or sorry, Fada, if he can rotate effectively on the uh, Invoker and whether or not... Wait, did I say Invoker? I meant Batrider. Batrider. Yeah, and if Invoker can have as much of an impact as Batrider. So right. I think it's still fairly even. It really just depends on the two solo mid plays. I think those are the most important. Uh, the timing of the support rotations has about ended, and Sigma's offlane is just like whatever. They, they're both 0-1 and one right now. They have boots on... Um, the Venomancer, but that's that's just not really a win, a one lane for them, especially considering that they haven't shut down Havost at all. I think living in California has rubbed off on you. Whatever is your new favorite word? Whatever. 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 <laughs> Whatever, guys. Well, we do hop turning back into a preteen, a, a valley boy, girl. a valley boy, if you will. Uh, Navi gonna just focus on their economy at this point. Like you said, the time for roaming is somewhat slowed down. The key item that's gonna boost Sigma's mid game is the Batrider Blink, and it's coming. Fairly soon. I'd say he should have it by like the 11, 12 minute mark probably if he doesn't die. Something mm -hmm. like that. It's, you know, the blink is a bit slower though when you're not actually going woods right away. And, you know, unfortunately for Bat nowadays, going woods is not as viable as it used to be. Yeah, the pressure is definitely on Sigma though to try and get their uh, mid-game advantage as opposed to sitting back and farm. Because Navi, they can get really big on Invoker as well as Lifestealer and even Timbersaw scales decently well with items. And... Sigma, they really have to just depend on the Luna in the late, late game. So I don't think that they can play the passive far more, and we should start seeing some rotations Radiant's coming up soon. Yeah, Navi, just in terms of golden experience, it's fairly even for now, but with the one Midas out and with their ability to flash farm in the mid game, it's going to be... Sigma just has a lot of heroes that kind of fall off and don't do as much at certain stages. Venno's not going to be too useful against Lifestealer if he gets off Rage. You have an Abaddon who... Is a decent counter initiator, but doesn't provide you much damage or team fight lockdown. Generally, you pick him just to win a lane uh, or to counter a specific hero, but I'm not feeling like he's going to have the hugest impact as this game develops. Yeah, perhaps Sigma can get the Alchemist to transition into a damage build, but it looks like he's going uh, with the early medallion. No Midas on him. Well, too. Roche is the other way that they can put some pressure on Navi, is going into the pick quickly. Luna already hitting level 8. Uh, the Treads, the early Basilius. Decent items to take Roche fast, but very hard to do Roche when there's constantly Ford Spirits coming and scouting out. Chen creeps as well. And uh, we'll have to see if they actually go for it anytime soon. Yep, checking Luna's farm. Looks like she has gone for Treads Bracer. No HOD up yet. Sigma does not like to play greedy on their they're anyone really. We don't see Midas's, we don't see early Helm of the Dominator. Right. They're they're not that kind of team though. They don't they don't play the farm game and rarely do they win the late game farm war or two. Yeah, that's what we saw yesterday was when they went Gyro Lifestore. They went for a lineup that looks like it's a greedy farm lineup, but then they played it like a very mid-game oriented, just rush your BKB to try and team fight lineup, but it just they just got out farm too much when they tried to do that. Even the other game, when Fada got really farmed on the puck, they just weren't able to transition that into any kills and any objectives. Well, this could be the item that blows the game open. At least Sigma will be hoping for that. It's the Blink Dagger for Fata being delivered now. Getting a kill here on Dendi or Havost would be huge. But can he kill either? Puppy just lurking mid. Almost has a mech completed and arcane boots at 11 minutes. Very good farm for him. Hits level 6. And it's going to be hard to bring Dendi down with this There's kind of There's a smoke from Fada immediately. Looks like they're probably going to go for Havost. They, I mean, with this the free farming Batrider, this is about the timing that you expect for a blink. Oh, Havost might reveal the smoke if they walk along the river path. But they lurk in the river for now. And Havost will go into a camp here. Sigma are going to pop Firefly and look to go. He's already but he's got stun. He's got Puppy next to him. This is not going to be... Kuro. Oh, sorry. They actually go on Kuro here. Pick off the... Uh, the do you see how much damage that did to him? He, it literally did like 75 to 80% of his HP from that Concoction Medallion Acid Spray. I, but, actu I actually thought they were going to go on Havost and didn't have the camera in the right place. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, yeah, he, he was almost dead by the time I moved the camera there. Yeah, poor Rubik. Got obliterated. And the two Ford Spirits now come out for Denny, so he'll be able to put even more pressure mid. This is the build that we see most often, is the, the four staff rush nowadays. Not that much Midas Invoker. We actually saw a mech rush today from Ice Ice Ice's Invoker, but when you have Chen on your team, you don't need your Invoker going mech. Yep, he does love the four staff rush. It's mm, just makes it really hard to go on him, especially with a Chen already backing him up. Yeah, he might need a Yules though. Um, just 
just for maybe counter initiate from Bat Rider, but Force Staff doesn't really save anyone from um, Bat. Yeah, especially not with all the slows on Signal. They'll probably just run you down anyway, and you can't really fog when you're up against Firefly. Here comes an Invis Funic looking to make a move. He's got some backup Kuroki in tow, as is Puppy. And they'll look to dive here on Poss. They jump in with the Shock Run, but Poss is not dead yet. He gets lifted up. Sunstrike's going to fly. He walks right into it. Oh, but that's a two-hero stun. Not bad for Poss. Is it enough that Chen Creeps bring him down? He just walked right into that one, Ben. Yeah, he did get a three-hero stun, though, but just not enough. They need more uh, TP reactions. He was too. actually quite hard to kill there with the... I don't think he actually used the medallion. Had the bonus armor from it and made him fairly durable. Yeah. Even though the Sun Trike connected too. Megal trying to pressure bottom. Comes out for the offlane Venno, but it's at the same time as the enemy jungler uh, pretty much has his mech. In fact, the recipe is already there. So if you're using your three position, you get the mech at the same time the enemy four position does. You can't be feeling too good about it. Yep. And it looks like both teams are just going to be content with exchanging towers. Again, I think this favor is Navi, though. Oh, Life Stealer Bomb comes through. The Eclipse is there, though. Instantly assassinates Funny, but a Sunstrike will secure the kill. Dendi makes it a one for one. Not bad considering, but Navi will definitely take it. That's one of those times when you don't necessarily have to pop Rage instantly so that you can share some of the Eclipse. If you take, like, two hits, then you Rage so you can actually kill them faster. I guess sometimes that you, you want to pop it immediately so you can burst them down as quickly as possible so someone like Abaddon doesn't come in. So, eh, Funic does sacrifice oh no. his life, They found Poss here. He doesn't have a TP available. He's just going to die himself. The Hound stun stolen by Kuroki. Thrown back the other way. He stunned himself once initially there and then was hiding in the trees and could not TP out as it was on cooldown. And Navi, they hunt him down and they pick him off. If things are just not going very well for Sigma, they need to defend their other two T1s, though. If they don't defend those, then Roshan will open up to Na'Vi, and they can just take complete control of the map right now. Fada has been... We saw the one gank. That yeah, was really that's it. That's quiet. He has he has to make plays happen. This is the time. He has to take control as soon as he gets blink. He's used his lasso once. It's been off cooldown for about a minute now. But I think like the 10 to 25 minute is when Batrider has to take control, has to kill the high priority targets like Invoker or Lifestealer, or it's kind of a dead pick. And those heroes are just farming freely. In fact, they are your two lead farmers. They have 6,400 net worth on the Lifestealer for a vote. Plus, he's got Midas, so it's only going one way, and that's straight up. As well as Dendi farming quite well. They're getting core items. Necrobook's going to be coming out soon for Dendi. Avost has already completed drums. And, you know, you can't lasso both of them. And Sigma, I feel like they're a bit lacking on damage here. Their main damage is just the Luna and the Alk in the team fights. But Navi get too much tankier, already having a mech, already having pretty high levels. It's going to be hard to just kill anyone quickly during a lasso. We Sounds see a right. you know, yep. scout for the Roche, but Sigma aren't doing it. They're really? smoked up. They're, they pinged on Funic, but Funic's not the hero that you want to kill. He is the third most important hero behind the Invoker and the Life Sealer, but they really need to get one of the more farm dependent heroes. Well, there they go. A kill is a kill, and they'll we'll definitely look to take Funic here. The lasso's going to fly. Alk stun being channeled. <laughs> look at the damage from that stun. Oh my goodness. That was like two thirds of his health, I want to say. Was, it was even worse for Rubik when he got blown up. <laughs> What a, what a hero Alchemist is. But, it, like you said, it's not the highest priority target. Denny's also doing some really nice stacking here with the Forge Spirit uh, onto this big cam. Look how much it's been stacked. And yeah, Navi, just a better team at playing greedy. Yep, they seem very comfortable with it. Only the one Midas, but it's more just their supports farm the jungle really well. The, the Rubik as well as the Chen. Very efficient there. Sigma's gotten some decent farm. It looks like they're prepping for a Roche attempt, but... Surprised they haven't made a go at it sooner. Navi just having a good lineup to scout it out in general with Sunstrike as well as all the summons they have at their disposal. Well, Bat has a key item now. Four Staff is out. You would think this would allow them to make a go on some of these higher priority targets, but we'll have to see if they can do it. So far, mixed results from the ganks. Saksha may get caught out here. There's a smoke from Kuro and Puppy, but it's only lasting about 10 more seconds. They have to find her or find her fast. The thing is, Kuro pinged over here. He, he pinged, okay, let's go this way. Can you see it on my mini map? Yes, yes. And then they actually went like all the way around, and then the smoke actually wore off. If they had just gone the route that uh, Kiro had suggested, they would have gotten an easy kill. Well, into the pit, Sigma will go, and it might just be a fortuitous timing here as the smoke ends for Navi. They're going to show some heroes top. Three heroes, three centaurs pushing. This could be really bad for Sigma. Lift into the triple centaur, very hard to deal with. But 
It's going to be a Roche for this, so good trade. Sigma take the Aegis. They needed it. And now 17 minutes in, they can look to teamfight. BKB about to come out on Luna. Navi bringing four heroes top. They all rotate in. They might find Dendi, but there's really no backup. He actually goes in on the Life Stealer instead. Sunstrike's going to fly off the mark there, but now Cassius will be brought down in a flurry of damage. Does he have his BKB for when he comes back? It's not delivered yet. Miguel dropping low. Everyone on Navi still at full HP. In the meantime, the Batrider still trying to deal with a boast who never died through the lasso. Too tanky. They just can't bring him down. They do stop his TP out. Maybe they get him on the runaround. Low and finally dead. Make it a one for one. An Alk for a life stealer. Good trade for Sigma, but they lost the Aegis, so not so great when you look at it that way. And they lose the tier two as well. Possible is just a tiny bit too slow on releasing his stun. He was able to rage after the after the lasso, and they weren't able to combo the lasso and the unstable concoction properly, and then life still kind of went rampant from there. And not having BKB for the Luna really hurts as well. Came back and couldn't really aggressively force a fight, and was level 11, had the level 2 ultimate at her disposal, so sure they get the Roche goal, but the A just doing almost nothing this game. Venomancer also was not close enough to mech, but had Navi gotten that smoke off, no, Sigma wouldn't have taken that Aegis, and they probably would have been uh, able to get a tower and a Luna kill if Sigma had chosen to defend. So They're going like to go on pass here, it looks like. Oh, fuck. Miguel going to spot them out. Throws the Gale, but it won't connect. Puppy still sitting on the triple centaurs and maybe looking to push this mid-tier one. Or triple centaur OP. This Bat Rider, it's kind of hard for him to go into the fights. He, he goes in and he just gets lifted or cold snapped. I, this is definitely feels like a game where he's going to need BKB at some point. Maybe not his next item, but Navi just have great counter initiation for when he jumps. Yeah, it all depends on their positioning though, whether they're all close like this or whether Havos is going to be separated from his team like at the top T2. So Havos needs to watch his positioning, make sure that Rubik's within like 600 to like 800 range. For now, Navi just, I wouldn't quite call it five manning, but they're close to it, just grouping up. Not a formation that the back can really find his way into. Well, he wants to go on Denny, but instantly cold snap. Navi were well prepared for that one. Yeah, at this Firefly point, he kind of has to go on Dendi. But Dendi has a lot of backup, and now Funic's been infested. Navi, it is five mid at this point. They pushed out bottom lane. Now they'll look to dive here. Sigma could be caught completely off guard. The wards doing some decent damage. Hard to push in the acid spray, but they just go deep for this one. Funic jumping forward, not finding an opening just yet. Meanwhile, Puppy sending the Centaurs on a big wraparound, but there was a lasso. They found Dendi, but the Centaurs surround him. Two stuns on Fata. Dendi's still alive, dropping pretty fast. He gets four step out. He's going to live for now. The Luna jumps in, drops her Eclipse, but doesn't finish off Dendi. Habo still standing strong, but they right-click him down with the Luna. That's a great trade. Three for one, and they want more. They want Dendi here as well. The stolen Eclipse from Kuroki from the low ground. He turns it back the other way, makes it a four for two. Still a fantastic fight. For Sigma in the end. That would have been even worse had those centaurs not been where they were. That looked like the perfect counter initiation. They had three centaurs right where the Batrider pulled it, but he still ended up going down in the end. Stuck around for a long time. Life Stealer just keeps dying immediately after his rage too. You uh, really see the power of Luna to deal with the Life Stealer because everyone's hitting so much harder from the aura. Right. And he uses his infest offensively instead of defensively. I think he might have to use it um, he might have to use it to escape defensively instead. He, I think he needs to be the one to get lassoed so that... Because he's the, he's the most survivable after it through right. Infest, like you mentioned. And he has the armor up too. He has a fair amount of armor, a fair amount of HP too, 1,500 HP, 11 armor. He could definitely survive for at least a few seconds. Maybe if he gets like unstable concoction into Eclipse and a lasso, but then you're using three ultimates for just one hero. And with Chen heal, Chen send back, Chen mech too, he's very likely to survive. But a hero like Invoker with much less armor and not as good defensive cooldowns is just going to die after the lasso, even if you force up, even if you Chen heal, even if you mech. Yeah, and you know, one thing we talked about in the pregame that I think we're seeing right now is that Sigma, definitely the team we felt needed to rely on the opponent to make mistakes, and that's exactly what Navi did there. They were able to punish it, and now it gives them the openings to get those next items, and they do have some good heroes in a farm war. I mean, sure, they didn't go for the early Midas. It seemed like they were getting out farm, but if Luna gets a Dominator up, they've been stacking the Ancients and will continue to try and do so, although it looks like this one did, failed the stack timing, but with the Dominator, with Batrider able to farm the jungle pretty quickly, they could look to keep up in terms of CS. Nope. Bucky Mad still pretty poor to just a staff of wizardry and 
checking Kiro's farm. He doesn't have a blink or anything yet. He, I think he really needs a blink so he can counter initiate the bad. But, I mean, bad's going to have BKB at a decent clip too with the way things are going. And is he, is he actually building BKB? I'm not sure. I think he needs one though. Yeah, I definitely think he needs one, but I've not seen him go for any components yet. Is there anything at the base? No, so I guess he's got a ways to go before that Radiant's is complete. Top tower yeah, it looks like it, it seems like he's had blink and force forever though. Did he Oh, you know what? He bought back in that fight. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we actually called that out, but he did buy back, so that's where a lot of his money went. But I mean definitely worth it the way the fight developed for Sigma. So now Sigma just content to farm and probably waiting for the next Roshan to make their move. That's where Navi are going to have to contest into a very difficult area. But right now it's Navi farming a lot of Ancients and getting quite a bit off the map. Phonic still defending the tier 1 top. It has not yet fallen. Despite Sigma having quite a few heroes that are good for taking towers. I mean, running a safe lane Luna and not having the enemy tier 1 at 23 minutes is very unusual. Fada's been doing a really good job in these team fights of not getting caught out and always getting the jump on Navi. If they kill Fada, then they're pretty much all forced, turn, uh, forced to turn tail and run. Yeah, they really are. I want to point out, you mentioned that the one thing Sigma has is kind of an X-Factor is the Alk that can transition into a carry, and he has picked up a plate mail. So if you get the AC, that's the point where he can start farming quite quickly and help them with Roche, will help them in pretty much every department. He so needs items that they want to take this late. They're going to need... Him like and the Luna. Those are really the two key heroes. Because Bat's pretty much got everything you need aside from the BKB. Right. Now Lifestealer has a Basher. Mm, I think he needs actually more survivability instead of more damage. I think he might need like a SNY or even just a Saint or a Heaven's Halberd. Just so that he can live a little bit longer when he gets focused. Because the last, the way the last team fight went, they just lassoed the Invoker, killed him, and then they kited him during the uh, during the rage and then immediately focused him right after so he wasn't able to do that much damage during the rage too and you're not going to be able to do it versus an abaddon i guess the issue with that is that there's a lot of physical damage here and getting extra hp will help but i mean it's not like necessarily going to help him all that halberd much. yeah assault caress wouldn't be terrible either because mm -hmm. i feel like that's what he's going to die to is the right clicks from the luna the medallion and acid spray being dropped on him and Eventually the AC, but hold that thought because Navi smoked up as a pack. They've got a pack leader, in fact. The Alpha up here, and they'll go right under the Luna. Instantly melts. Doesn't have buyback either. What a what a fortuitous gank for Navi. And that was so fast. They had an Observer Ward setting that one up. Do you see how fast she blew up, though? That was like insane. Like two seconds. Yeah, she's supposed to be pretty farmed, too. She doesn't have that much HP. She does have a lot of um, armor. It's the pure damage from the Timber Saw. Right. She just, like you said, doesn't have that much HP yet. If, she, if she has a Satanic there, they, they don't kill her, but it's way too early for that to be out. And Life Stealer can still crush her on a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one matchup, even if she gets Satanic. And that's where they really need a farmed Alk, is you cannot rely on your Luna just to single-handedly out, out carry Life Stealer until she's got, like, Manta, Butterfly, Satanic. And that's a long way. Yep, she's going to need a lot of items to outcarry carry Havost in this game. And she hasn't been, like, ancient stacking too much, it looks like. It failed on one or two of them. I I haven't seen if Puppy's been blocking it. Oh, we will see Kuroki just stealing an aphotic yeah, I mean, he's, now. like, not stacking at this 26-minute mark either. Not really sure why. Yeah, I don't know if they think it's warded or something, but that's quite a few stacks he's missed. Yeah, and he was dead, too. Sunstrike's going to fly. Roche is coming up fairly soon. In fact, like, about 45 seconds or so, but... This, now that Navi's boots have travel on Dendi, they are they have the basher up on the lifestyle. They're getting some items that will help them to take that 5v5 fight. Dendi won't be able to split push as, as effectively as normal, though, because of the threat of the Bat Rider. And it's Pasta's job to make him feel scared. <laughs> he doesn't seem to feel threatened. And yeah, now, now he's like, yeah, I'm a little far out. He'll TP home. And they may rotate towards the Roshan pit. They have spotted out two heroes top, so they definitely know Sigma's not rushing. They smoke, and if they get this kill, they'll probably take a tier 1 off of it. Miguel looks to be in quite a bit of trouble here. In comes the boat. Marching forward, dropping the open wounds. There's a lift. A double TP reaction does come, though. Miguel drops fast. That's the mech down off the bat. Now Effie mad. Forced to pop his ultimate very early. And really nothing they can do. No, they go in on Dendi. Great force staff back as well. But can they bring Dendi down? He's very tanky and will survive for the time being. Now from the backside comes Stefanik. It's an ambush. It's a trap. They're going to bring him down. Pass as well. This could be four. This could be a full team wipe, in fact, if the Luna shows up. She does not. Four fall. And Navi will take a tier one, a tier two, and maybe a Roche as well after that amazing team fight. That's a real big miscommunication by Sigma there. 
Saksha had just TP to the T2 to farm this camp and this camp right before the 27 minute spawn. And he got it. I guess he's really close to this butterfly. He wanted to fight there. But after the last one, they had no damage. If they have an Eclipse into a Lucent Beam, right when he's about to four step, then yeah, maybe they can kill him there. But Saksha really had to be there for that fight. And it all goes back to that smoking. Because if he if they don't smoke him, then he already has his butterfly by now. And just the, the place that they went for the smoke gank was ideal. It's the bottom lane, the tier one, when Roche has just respawned. That's where you want to be ganking, not off in the top lane of the jungle. So great awareness and decision making from Navi. And now they've taken ages, a lot of gold going their way. All of a sudden, what was dead even seven, eight minutes ago is now a seven and a half K gold lead. Navi just excelling in the mid game, the late game decision making. And for Sigma, it generally seems like either they snowball or they don't win, at least this tournament. Now they go in, they will find Dendi, he's caught out, he doesn't have the Aegis, he's dropping fast here, and will go down. The power of the bat. We need a big place from Fado, we get one here. Do they find Funnick as well? He drops low, but he's not dead just yet. And on the flip side is Havos, diving direct, directly onto the Luna, who jukes through the trees, but now gets isolated. Rage is pulling down, pops the Eclipse, gets healed up, some medical assistance comes from the Abaddon for now. But the Eclipse only hitting Necro units, not really what you want. The Alpha Wolf tank gives some damage as well, now an Urn Charge. One more nuke from the Necro will bring him down, dies! Oh, what a big kill, what a massive kill. Havos going ham, brings down another core. They do lose the Chen on the backside, but now in comes the Aux Stun, slowing down Havos while they look to retreat. And Migo will be next in line. This is going to be three dead. And all of them pours. Well, maybe not. The Timber Chain misses. Still falls regardless. Meanwhile, Kuroki was diving the base. What a chaotic fight. But Navi again coming out on top. Did not even lose the Aegis. And this is the problem with Luna. She is pretty farmed. But she spent the whole entire fight running away from Havost. Not and a good could matchup. Not, survive. not a good matchup against Lifestealer until you get those like three tier four items. And just not... Was slightly ahead in terms of net worth, but no longer. Now down a good 2.5k. And the worst part is, now there's an Abyssal Blade on Avost, so he can solo kill this Luna with ease. Yeah, I think that Luna really excels at taking down TU1 towers and... And, and team fighting and fairly team early, fight early. Yeah. But now it's a little bit too late. They have the Yules for fucking Mad during his ultimate too. They will find Kuroki here. They jump in, they get one, but Navi's already taken one as well. There's still three heroes on the deck. Two of them will respawn shortly. And Navi taking the tier 2, giving up a kill on their support Rubik, but getting the support in return. Overall, every little trade seems to be just tilting slightly in their favor, and now it's accumulated to a pretty su substantial advantage. Avos has his Abyssal Blade too, Kuroki has his Blink Dagger, things are just looking worse and worse for Sigma, and they and definitely don't have control of Roshan, and they still have Lifestealer, or well, Lifestealer still has the Aegis. And we talked about if Sigma wants to take this late, they really need a farmed out. They don't have a farm now. He's just sitting on a plate mail at this point. That's not going to cut it. He needs AC, and then he needs more items. Probably something like a Heaven's Halberd to help him tank up. Uh, but he's a long way from getting anything like that. I think the bigger deal is that Luna doesn't have any farm. She had her butterfly, or she had her eagle horn right here in that smoke gank when she got caught out solo. And then since then, she hasn't even been able to farm it. And it's been like a good five minutes. And, has, since then. and didn't come to the fight bottom earlier as well. And still wasn't able to finish farming it. Just And it goes back to a lot of the small things that we talked about. The lack of ancient stacking, the lack of uh, using the neutral. Even when he was dead, Sakshika just having an off game today. Yeah, and this is like Navi is just a more explosive lineup. You make like one or two small mistakes, and they do one or two good smokings, and the game just completely changes. Looking at the gold graph, it was relatively even until 25 minutes, and then boom, 12,000 gold lead for Navi when it was only 2,000 uh, about 10 minutes before that. What can Sigma do to come back at this point? It looks pretty bleak, but. Do they have a shot? And if so, what's the game plan? Mm, firstly, they need a butterfly on Luna. Uh, secondly, I think they need a satanic on Luna too, because she just has to be able to man up during li to, uh, against Life Stealer. BKB and butterfly is not going to be enough because she'll just get abyssaled for most of the duration of her BKB. Um, also, I think that Sigma just needs more ganks. Fada has been. He's been doing well in team fights. He's been finding really good lassos. He's pulled in Dendi and killed Dendi twice. But as far as making Navi feel threatened around the map, he hasn't really done so. Like we saw that time that Dendi just like pushed away up here too, and they're just split farming and not really feeling the presence of Batrider on the map. By the way, Dendi is going refresher, so we could see some double meatball action coming very soon to a theater near you. As Navi group up and look to take the tier two mid. This is going to be an aggressive push for them. Meanwhile, Sigma lurking on the high ground, worried about getting caught out. 
Navi take a tier two. Do they march onto the base at this point? They're thinking about it. Sigma forced to turn tail and run. Do Navi go high ground here? They've got Aegis. They've got a lot of big items. And it looks like I think it's time. Yep, checking the Roshan. And Refresher is coming. They have one minute on it. Refresher is coming for Dendi. Oh, my. This is one of those games where you're going to want the ticket to go back and watch the replay of this impending fight. Assuming he doesn't die instantly, we're going to see some magic, I hope. Timbersaw also has a Blink Dagger, too. So he can just Blink on the Luna or the Bat Rider. That's a lot better than Timber Chain Initiation. And you can't really use that going high ground, either. There ain't too many trees here. Right. But they'll rotate towards top instead. Maybe they don't look to break the base with the Sages. I mean, it's they still have a lot of room to grow on this lineup. Timbersaw can farm a Hex. The Lifestealer can get an MKB to deal with Luna's Butterfly. Invoker can get a Hex. Uh, there's plenty of items that Navi can still pick up that will make it easier for them to break. Does Refresher work on Necrobooks? I, I know that you can't have two pairs out at once. I think it re-arms it. It re-arms it? Yeah, but you can't... Like That's you pretty scary. Re-arm re does not work on it, though, correct? Right. Even having two Necrobooks out there is it's going to be ridiculous. And does Puppy have his Necro 3 too? Yeah, they have Necro 3. So they can just siege a tower and wait for Sigma to come to them if they really want to. But more likely than not, they're either going to get the jump on Luna or Batrider early on in the fight. Yeah, and Navi, having double Necrobook, whether or not you can refresh it, I mean, really being beside the point, is so good at sieging. And Lysdere can just walk up Rage, hit it a few times, and focusing him is quite difficult. I mean can be sent back they've got he's very tanky uh, as long as he gets off his rage this luna doesn't really have enough damage as of yet venomancer has a scepter but puppy is trying to counter it with a hood of his own Not I, I thought he was going to go lincoln sphere but he actually does go yeah, i think hood. a lincoln sphere would be really good for them too for, I don't the, think for the lasso initiation they don't have anything that can pop it besides uh or pop it during pkb besides lasso yeah that's really not what you want to use which makes the most literally immune when he's raged well, there is an Assault Caress, some signs of life here for Sigma. And if Alk and Luna do get 5-6 slotted, that's very hard to deal with. I think if it gets to that point, they have a fighting chance, but... It's going to be a long time before that happens, though. They're getting really outfarmed. It was once like a 3k gold disadvantage for fucking Matt... Or, sorry, uh, for our Luna for Sakshka. Now it's more of like a 5k gold disadvantage. Really falling behind, and it's because Navi pushing all the lanes, controlling the jungle, uh, and the threat of that instant assassination from a Lifestealer bomb is keeping them penned up inside their base, as well as the complete lack of vision. They don't really see much. Luna still trying to work on her items, but as you said, she is very, very far behind. Too far behind. So I guess Navi, they let the Aegis expire. Next Aegis, they should be looking to go. Break the base at that point. Just waiting for Aegis cheese and then break the base, yeah. And Sigma, they know that Aegis is probably going to spell doom for them, so they do start prep for the Roche. At least they want to scout it. Their lineup see on paper seems really good at taking Roche fights. Luna, fantastic there. The Bat Rider is as well. But Manavi may just be too far ahead in terms of items where even with a really good Roche lineup, they just don't have the items to fight. They need more firepower. It's all on Fada. Can he get the perfect initiation? There's no BKB here. It's He's been managing to find the openings, but it just takes one bad initiation to lose Sigma a fight which probably loses them Roche, and with that, the base should fall shortly. And usually they still take losses during the lasso. It's not like a blink lasso oh and no. no one dies. Havost is going man mode. Poss turns tail and run, even with this in the Salt Caress. Havost bringing him down fast. He's not dead yet, but Poss will fall, even through all the heals. They brought down one. Now he just chops away at Miguel. The Gale was stolen. Will connect. That's two dead. And that's Roche in a minute if they want to wait for it. Or they could just push high ground now. Big win there for Navi. They had, to, they had to be worried about the Roche attempt, Ben. They had to sit around near the pits. So they can see if it's respawning, but that also means they're open for Navi to just walk in and kill them. Looks like the base push is not going to wait for... Or they're not going to wait for Aegis, but they have the Necro Books. They have two Necro Book 3s. That is so annoying. And the with. Forge Spirits as well. Throwing Assault Caress on top. The Cherry on top for this push. How do Navi even... How can they be stopped at this point? Sigma, they'll lose one lane of Rax here, and they may well be on their way to losing this game. One lane down, they're going to go for two. No buybacks in sight. And Navi, two lanes of Rax and an Aegis Cheese. That should pretty much be all she wrote. Sigma seems like they're out of gas here. Fada will go in. It's the last stand. He jumps in. He drops the last, and they get into clips off. They try to bring Havos down, and they succeed in doing so. But the melee barracks have fallen. It's a heavy toll they've had to pay here. The BKB is now down on Luna as well. 
with Eclipse and BKB down. Navi could look to even go back straight into the pit. They'll drop the meatball. It's one. It's two. He refreshes. Does he get it off? Dendi disabled through it all. He's dropping fast. He'll try and drop another. The flashy play sent home by Dendi. Bailed out or by Puppy in the nick of time. Double double uh, meatball. Slightly underwhelming in that fight, but hey, the, he, he Did you lived. see the death being blast? It actually pushed Venomancer like the... Oops. It, it, pu it pushed him back. It was strange. The it pushed him like towards Invoker. I didn't. I didn't actually catch that. Yeah, I, I think that's why the meteor blast was underwhelming. He like shot the meteor and then he blasted him, but he got pulled towards the invoker, and then from there it was it, it, it was rather underwhelming. They can do Roshan if they want to, but looks like with a buyback from Evokes, they're just looking to end the game right now. The other thing was he got interrupted. He didn't get to use the combo immediately. He got stunned, and, and that delayed the, the the double meteor, double deafening blast. Now they go in, big life stealer pump instantly blowing up Fata and Havos once more. He wants a piece of Miguel and he'll have his way with Cassius Clay. In fact, Sakshio probably the next one down. Well, Rage will end. The Ice Wall deployed and now Miguel dropping fast. They bring down the Luna. Sunstrike into the fountain, slightly off the mark, but Funic does it anyway. And that'll be game. Navi just running over Sigma. And I think that Sakshio literally did zero damage during his BKB. He got abyssaled immediately and then ran away and then Funic just killed him. And they're on their feet here in Kiev. The hometown crowd out in force to support the hometown team. Navi played really well. Sigma, they had an okay draft, I'd say. I think the Luna was fairly weak pick. Yeah, didn't match up well against the Lifestealer at all. Oh, I think and not Lifestealer any Lifestealer. You know, they should have just banned it out. Maybe they forgot it was out there because it seems a little curious. Especially when you have Luna, generally she, everyone knows she's not a great matchup versus Lifestealer in a far more. Good for pushing early. He can't really do much about that. They could have taken it for themselves too. They could have picked it immediately into as a third pick and they could have combo well with a Batrider pick that they could set up for too. You know, so. the, the other thing was I was surprised they never took the tier one top until like very, I don't even know if they took it at all, mm. but not until very late in the game. They are running a Luna defensive uh, Luna safe lane. Normally you take that tower by that point. But. Yeah, if you're not taking towers, you might as well just pick something else like an anti-mage who can actually deal with a life stealer relatively well and can put a lot more split pressure and can farm relatively fast without the use of ancient stacks. It just goes back to Sigma and it seems like the way that they like to play isn't really coinciding with how they're drafting. I agree. They're not showing an ability to play multiple styles. Right. It, Luna's more like five-man barrel down, take down T1s, take down T2s, take Roshan, but they only got the first Roshan, and that was only because they sneaked it in. Navi had a very clear game plan. It's, we're going to outfarm you, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take advantage of our superior ability to just take team fights, man up, and kill your carry. That's what they did. They, they've primed... They were more efficient with the jungling early on from the supports. Uh, they only rotated a few times when they did. It was almost always successful. Uh, and they got the early Midas on Havos. So between all that, it seems like if it comes down to a war of attrition and economy, Navi are going to win in this series. Yeah, uh, Sigma can't win in that route. They couldn't do it versus Alliance. They are going to be able to do it versus Navi. I also think that Navi, they were behind on kills for most of the game, but the kills that they got were really important. Like getting the kill on the... Uh, getting the kill on Luna right before that sequence of events before she got her butterfly and then picking off the two heroes on bottom right before they got into the racks too so they got kills that were important meanwhile Sigma they lassoed Funic and got a kill on him whatever they got a kill on uh, Rubik and that didn't matter either they have to kill Havos they have to kill Dendi they have to kill important heroes and it's not like Fada played really poorly it's just his team just wasn't on the same page. Those supports, having Venno and Abaddon, they're just not good for blowing somebody up. They just don't match up that well when heroes are that tanky. They don't have any lockdown. It was a lot of pressure on Fada to do all the heavy lifting. And it didn't even really seem like Venno farmed in his lane because he just didn't have a, a big impact. He didn't have, like, Necro 3 at the end like Puppy did. Yeah, and, and farming Venno just seemed not yeah, that that's impressive. not a good duel lane. They need, the, they need the, someone who can make a use of the items. The one thing that has been effective, like for Ice Dice Ice, for DK, was farming Venno. He gets a really fast mech, but then the team uses it uh, to fulfill a specific goal, which was pushing early. I think they had like a Luna or a DK, you know, a strong pushing draft backing up the offlane Venno, or allow you to clash, but they got the mech and they just kind of farm with it. It's, well, you could get an offlaner that does more. I think they could have utilized a Razor pick. Too, instead of like the life stealer, a Venomancer, yeah, it, it does it really well. I mean, granted, life stealer was the last pick, so if they, they just didn't have any solution for life stealer, Venom was okay and he harassed him as much as he could in lane, but after that, he just kind of went crazy. Well, 
for Navi, it was a well-rounded team effort. Not one player who really carried the game, but they all did their job. And good to see Puppy back on a jungler. I think that's something that we may we may see Sigma to ban in the second stage. Something like the Chen. And Puppy carried in the draft too. Yeah, great draft from him. He's really stepped his game up here. And guys, on that note, we take a quick break. Sigma now trailing 0-1 in the best of three, but not out of it just yet, Ben. They have to win two in a row. Whoever wins, Alliance is waiting in the grand final. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. For the first time ever in the eighth season of Legendary Star Ladder, viewers will be able to increase the Dota 2 prize pool on their own. The base prize pool is $50,000. Each ticket bought through the Dota 2 store will add $2.50 to the tournament prize pool. Support your favorite team and help the development Star Ladder Star Series. Every ticket owner gets an exclusive Weaver set. 